Hello and welcome to game one of the semi-final of the Star City Games Invitational Qualifier. We've got Jonathan Randall on the right playing uh, blue, white, red flash. We've seen him before and on the left having just mulligan to six. It's uh, Simon Marshall with his uh, Angel Reanimator deck, which is pretty much the same build as the one that won the uh, Grand Prix Nagoya. Yeah, it's different to the build we saw Jack Mitchell Burns play in round three. Um, Simon Marshall is playing the green in the deck, as we can see by his laying of a turn one Temple Garden. And so he's going to be set up more to sort of grind his opponent out rather than combo his opponent out, I think, at this point. And it's pretty much the perfect start from Jonathan there with the uh, turn two agent. Yeah, it's about as good as he can hope for with turn two auger. Um, I would say that John's pretty heavily favoured in this matchup, to tell you the truth. He can put pressure on fairly quickly with his tempo deck. He's not relying on sort of the one big spell resolving like Simon is. And I just think that the flash deck is just overall a bit of a smoother deck than the reanimator deck is uh, it's very often that someone will build a deck that is good for one tournament or will surprise people in a tournament we've had brad nelson do it recently with a crater hoop behemoth deck he's also done it in the past with a grand architect deck and obviously okita with this deck in his Grand Prix but those decks tend to not have a huge amount of longevity a lot of the time. Well the main reason for that of course is you know whenever you're playing uh, a deck that opponents don't know anything about um, there's quite a greater propensity for them to misplay or make suboptimal plays against you but as soon as people learn the deck and how to play against it obviously it loses uh, a lot of its uh, effectiveness in that respect. Yeah that's certainly true uh, people have been trying to play reanimator decks pretty much since Return to Ravnica came out and even before that with the old Freets deck and it's had the odd really good performance but I don't think that it's showing massive consistency across the field to tell you the truth uh, it turns out Jack finished five and two in the uh, sorry six and two in the Swiss, so he's finished top sixteen with a build of this deck. But I just think that it's a deck that if anyone's targeting it, it's just not going to uh, put up heavily uh, good results. What you're basically saying is the removal is uh, especially effective against a deck like an Angel Reanimator deck. Uh, certainly, stripping certain cards out of it makes it a uh, nigh on uh, useless. Yeah, there's also certain cards which can be brought in. It's like the Jun deck has Rakdos Charm in it and Deathrite Shamans and things like that, which just make life really difficult for you. Uh, Flash decks can bring in cards like Rest in Peace, which just turn you into a really bad mid-range deck, essentially. And likewise, we saw with the uh, Slaughter games as well. Mm. I mean, the whole idea with the green is that at least Simon has access to Nightshade Peddler as Ecstatic Aster so he can just mid-range his opponents out if necessary just because he can form this lock which doesn't let creatures appear on his opponent's side of the board so he does have a little bit more of a sort of plan B than supposedly I think someone like Jack may have had in round three but it's still not an outrageously good plan B against a deck like Flash. So Jonathan's looking at maybe dropping an angel into play at the end of turn here? I think so yeah there we go he's going to look at the top three cards again and put them all to the bottom yeah <laughs> Augur Bolas doing its work And Simon's going to sneak in, is it Static Aster into play while John's tapped out? Maybe he's uh, worried that John's got some counter spells. Potentially. He's also threatening the use of Nightshade Peddler uh, with it next turn. I'm not sure John's going to be too upset about that because obviously with the blue white red flash deck, John has access to both Searing Spear and Pillar of Flame. Against the more older builds of Flash that were just straight blue-white, the Nightshade Peddler is it static caster combo was pretty devastating because there was just no way really, outside of cards like on Summon which don't really get the job done, there wasn't a huge amount of ways for the uh, Flash deck to interact with it, but now that the Flash deck has red as well he's just got uh, Burn and Snapcaster Mages and just various other uh, cards that he can use to his advantage are there any count spells at all in Jonathan's deck? Yeah, there's plenty. Uh, he does also have a counter flux in the graveyard here, so a Snapcaster Mage would be a counter spell at this point. Um, 
he also has access, I believe, to dissipate and syncopate. It's really just a case where the decks which run counters these days tend to run a bit of a spread of them. It keeps you a little bit more resilient to cards like slaughter games, and it just gives you that little bit of uh, just gives you that little bit of variety in your deck as well. John just calmly sitting on Moreland Haunt and five on Tap Manor there. And this is the sort of problem when you're playing an Angel Reanimator deck. It's that he's facing down a attack already from Restoration Angel and Augur of Bolas, and Simon's really just looking to resolve one big spell, and that's never really been a huge uh, plus against decks that have been tempo decks in the past. So if you look back on to even back to the days of Blue Green Madness and other decks such as that, Threshold decks in Legacy that you see nowadays, trying to resolve the one big spell against those decks very rarely uh, turns out well for you. That's on Burial Rites for Simon. He's looking to target that Angel of Glory's Rise that's in his graveyard. What does that do, says Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at that commander. It's a good job you're not playing Legacy, Jonathan. You've just rearranged the graveyard. But uh, obviously you don't have to do that nowadays. It's only in Legacy where you have to keep your graveyard order uh, the way it should be. You can see that Jonathan has rewind in his hand there as well. So this Unburial Rite certainly isn't resolving. The only thing that we might be looking at potentially is something like a Dissipate if John has that in hand as well. Because that would obviously negate the fact that Unburial Rites is, uh, has two modes. But it looks like we're seeing uh, Rewind here. Yep, there we go. The Moorland Haunt that Jonathan has in play is pretty useless with that sca Static Astra out there. But that's about the only crumb of comfort I think that Simon can have at this point. You know, unless Jonathan's got another Angel, that'd be pretty devastating at this point. Nope, Searing Spear on the Staticaster, so we can start using that Moorland Haunt. Staticaster down, and Moorland Haunt in use. See, we came prepared for this with <laughs> some spirits. But when all that happened, it's like, yeah, that was at the end of your turn. Now I'm going to untap attack you and sit looking at you with five untap mana. Six untap mana. And John paid two there, so I think that we're. Uh, that's representing either Sphinx's Revelation or Snapcaster Mage on that rewind, which I think is probably going to be the more likely play at this point. And as we said, it's like Simon's had the chance to do what he wants to do, but he's not um, he's not been able really to do anything to affect John's play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, one of the problems with the Angel Re Reanimator decks, if it gets a, an average start. He's kind of struggling and forced to rely on resolving a certain spell, and if you don't get that spell, you yeah, don't kind that of looks falls like over. what's happening here. That's Snapcaster Mage on the rewind, and that also puts lethal damage on the board, or at least, click, yeah, also puts lethal damage on the board with the Moorland Haunt. So, quite a good matchup there for Jonathan as he takes game one. <laughs> 